Now, getting consent from patients is important because there are complications of lumbar puncture. The most common complication of lumbar puncture is the post-lumbar puncture headache, which is due to persisting leak of CSF in the lumbar spine, leading to low pressure in the head. Features of a post-lumbar puncture headache are really the postural headache, so a headache that's relieved by lying flat and re returns within a minute or two of standing up again. And back pain does occur in lumbar puncture because we are putting a needle into the back, but that's usually a temporary phenomenon, and chronic back pain is not a recognised complication of lumbar puncture. Ringing of the ears and, du and um, double vision can occur as effect of low pressure, and people sometimes feel very sick on standing up after lumbar puncture, again an effect of low pressure. Um, if your needle does go offline, they can sometimes irritate or, 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 or pierce a nerve root, and that can produce a shot of pain down the patient's leg. Very rare complications include a phenomenon called cortical vein thrombosis, which is due to the effects of low pressure causing um, mechanical stretching of a cortical vein leading to thrombosis, and that can cause a very bad persistent post-lumbar puncture headache. Very rarely you can get collections of subdural fluid after lumbar puncture, again due to an effect of very low intracranial pressure. Infection of the bone has been recorded following lumbar puncture, and that's probably down to carelessness, either by injecting a needle through some infection or having poor hygiene. Um, herniation of the cerebellar tonsils or coning should not happen in modern lumbar puncture practice because you're going to be imaging people where there's a suspicion of and raise intracranial pressure or a mass lesion present.